five major mistakes that every woman makes with their concealer, either when they're starting out or maybe as they get into concealer a little bit more. I'm bringing you those five mistakes and how easy it is to correct them. And then I'm also bringing you some tips that might help you to up your game with your concealer. It is very easy to get our concealer to looking crinkly and cakey and creased during the day. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to help you avoid all of that. I am really excited to be able to bring this to you because I'm sure there are a couple of things in here that you might not have thought of before. And I hope that they do help you up your concealer game and be able to love your concealer and your under eyes all over again at no matter what age you are. So let's get into that. I will have a bare face and we will go through what you can do to avoid the mistakes that most of us make when we do concealer and how to have your very best under eyes at any given age. Okay, so mistake number one is not moisturizing that area around your eyes enough. I want you to think of this whole entire area as the concealer area or the area that we need to brighten. It's not just underneath our eyes, it's on top too. My area is just as dark as the area that's underneath my eyes. So I want you to remember it's super important to hydrate there. I always start out with water, pat your face with water so that your skin is soaking in extra moisture already. Or I can go in with a spray like this one I love from Mario Badescu. Um, this is the facial spray with aloe, um, adaptogens, and coconut water. Um, they have some without coconut water if you are allergic to coconut. And then go in with your moisturizer afterwards. You can do your serums, your treatments, whatever you want to on there. Just remember that when you do that area, you need to use a ton of moisture. And I'll put in a clip here and I'll show you how much moisture I use. I use a lot and then I allow it to sink in. This is the best moisturizer I've ever found because this is going to be with me at the end of the day as much as it was when I very first put it on in the beginning of the day. It's just a fantastic fantastic moisturizer from Suko Yakasuhara. I've preached about this a million billion times. So I will make sure that you that is linked for you so that you know all about it. Now, when I put on my SPF after I do my moisturizer, I'm kind of careful. I don't put a huge layer of that right up underneath here. I do some. Um, you want to be protected, but you don't need a huge layer. My The majority of mine is going to go where the sun hits me the most on those areas. So yes, I do use SPF Dermatology's Tinted Universal Moisturizer with a SPF of 46 is my favorite. I purchased this over and over again. Okay, mistake number two. You might have too much moisture after you've used so much moisturizer. You might have too much moisturizer underneath your eyes that hasn't sink, sank in or you might not have let it had a chance to sink in completely. So I want you to take a tissue and I want you to just go under there and I want you to blot. This is the easiest way to deal with that. It's so easy. And this can be a problem when you use that much moisture even on the top of your eyes. So go ahead and just blot. You don't wanna wipe. We're not doing this for the purposes of getting the moisturizer off. We're doing it just for taking away excess. Next, go in and do your primer that is so so very important. Don't forget to do your primer because that's going to help the rest of your makeup. If you do my trick of powder before your foundation, don't go up under there. Don't do your eyes at all. Just make sure that you just do your cheeks and where you would normally put your foundation. And then I've chosen Joa, the Crystal Glow Prime, Prime Nation. Prime Dation. So I guess it's a hybrid of foundation and primer. I'll throw up on the screen what my color was, but this one is really way too dark for me. Um, not just dark, but it's very orange. So I'm gonna throw some of my mixing medium in there. If you don't know what my mixing medium is, I'll make sure that I put that into a card. Well, I usually forget about cards. Let's do, uh, I'll just make sure that I put that on, um, hopefully into the video description box so that you can see um, how I mix the foundations. Okay, much better color. Now, what I want you to remember, and the reason that I'm doing my foundation, usually I would do my eyes and then my foundation, but the reason that I'm doing this is I want you to keep that foundation away from, completely away from your under eyes. 
I feel like when you do that, when you put it up underneath your eyes, you're putting an extra coat on there. And that is just not something that um, works for me because the more layers you have underneath there, the more chance you have of creasing. So that is tip number three, is make sure that you don't get too many layers. Make sure you don't get too thick underneath there. We already have tons of moisturizer, but we blotted as much as we could away because we don't want things to get too thick underneath those eyes. Okay, foundation done. By the way, if you've been wondering about that Joa foundation, I really like it. It's very much like the Estee Lauder Double Wear. It is really high coverage and it lasts a long time. It is a really good foundation if you're somebody that likes the Estee Lauder Double Wear. But I want you to remember from this more than anything, and this is what I did my whole life that was my biggest mistake, it's not using a color corrector. Yeah, I am using Charlotte Tilbury's Magic um, Away color corrector, this is in medium, but this isn't my favorite. It's just a tiny bit too emollient. I'm trying to use up my stash a lot. I also have one that is from Believe Beauty that is like three or four dollars if you go into Dollar General, but if you don't have access to that, my very favorite of all time is Pixie, and you can get that at Target. I'll make sure I link or list and link all of those below. Now, again, light layers please remember light layers that's so important because you want to remember that putting extra product on there is going to make you look older because it's going to get it's going to accentuate those wrinkles more just going to set this down in all the darkness that i have down there and it does look really good once you do that and you cover that redness or that purple look that you have, it all of a sudden just starts to brighten up so quickly. And by the way, this is a Sephora concealer brush, which I can link for you as well. And I'm gonna let that set for a few minutes. I'm gonna let that set down so that when I put concealer on top of it, it's not gonna move around. That can be a problem too. On the top of my eyes, I've started using Kosas Concealer to take care of this darkness on top of here and to be a little bit of a primer. It's not meant to be a primer, but Kosas has these amazing skin-loving ingredients in it. It has ceramides, it has hyaluronic acid, it has all kinds of ingredients in it that really were meant to be skincare right along with a concealer. I have two colors and I use these because one was a little bit too light, one was a little bit too dark. I want you to put a dot, a light dot, if you're gonna use two different colors. You don't have to use two different colors. I only do it because this gets me to where my perfect color is. And then the lighter color I'm gonna use and mix in with it. So. There's actually two dots going on right there. Now, normally we would take this and we would work it in, right? We would make sure that it's all worked into our skin so that we don't get any, you know, any creasing or it doesn't look like we're gonna get any creasing. All I'm doing is covering at this point. So I'm covering, but I'm not padding to the point that it gets all worked in. This is the last mistake that I feel like people make. If you take the smallest amount of concealer you can and you put it there and you start to just work it in, it's not gonna work into your skin that well because this skin right here is very thin. Down here, our skin is more porous. It takes in more stuff. It, it sucks in more product. Up here, it doesn't around our eyes. So if you continue to work it in, you're gonna kind of almost work away all your product. Whereas if you just pat a little bit and let it set, then you're gonna have better coverage because it's going to have set up just a little bit on there. And so it's kind of a little playing with it process where you play with it to know when you need to go back in and take care of that and blend it in so that it doesn't get the creasing. So I'm just gonna let that set there for a second. I'm gonna take one of those colors and I'm gonna put it across the top of my eyes and I'm gonna work that in as my primer. Now I want you to see when I do this, then the bottom eyes are gonna look better too. See how much darkness that just took away? Even, you know, it's kind of a, a little bit of playing with light and illusion there. You take away the darkness on the top and then the bottom looks better as well. 
so don't be afraid to cancel out all of the darkness that is on the top of your lids as you're doing your makeup because that can be every bit as important now i would if i were you or if i were myself i would go in at this point and make sure that i did a little bit of dusting of powder just right there on that lid to make sure that that doesn't crease just do a light one you don't need to do very much i'm using the new powder from color pop it's the pretty fresh powder i really like this powder it's really a good one very soft and very light okay i feel like that's set up enough what i want you to do now is go back in with your sponge your finger whatever you choose to use and i want you to bounce that around and now we're picking up excess now we're pushing it product into our under eyes we're making sure that there's no excess i like to take it out here to my temple because i do get a lot of veining and discoloration out there plus right here in this corner right here we as older women get a lot of darkness right there so this helps to really lighten that area up now once you've done that it's set up you're where you want to be this is the lightest color from kosas kosas excuse me and this i learned from painted by spencer this is one of the best tricks i've ever seen to make this area look perfected and to make it look super bright using the lightest color i go in here i put one dot right there and now again instead of rubbing it all away i'm just going to lay it down let it set up just like i did the rest but you can already see what that's going to do that's going to bring a whole lot of brightness to this area while it's setting up i want to talk to you about the overall effect and i think that this is really really important when we get our makeup completely done like right now we're concentrating on our canvas and this area which is the eye darkness when we get our makeup completely done what happens is if you have a beautiful eyeshadow or if you have you know your lashes done your eyebrows done you have you know some pretty lipstick on the entire look is where people are going to be drawn they're not going to go whoa your under eyes look terrible they're crinkly I am going to have crinkly under eyes. I smile too much. I'm 53, almost 54 years old. I am going to have a bunch of wrinkles underneath there unless I got an eye lift, which I can't afford. Now you may, when you look in the mirror, be a little bit more bothered than other people by it. But remember, five times magnification, seven, 10 times magnification, nobody sees you like that they don't see you with that mirror that's really close like this and seeing all the wrinkles only you see that and so remember to be kind to yourself about your makeup when you're at this age or as you get older it isn't going to be like 20 30 year old but it's beautiful embrace where you are and know that those wrinkles those are things that you've gotten because you've been through so much in your life and be thankful that you get to be a certain age and that you get to enjoy this part of your life even if you do have a bunch of wrinkles and darkness but of course this tutorial is meant to help you to get the best look you possibly can with makeup and improve it as much as you possibly can but don't beat up on yourself please Please. it's just so counterproductive okay now we're just going to go back in now that i've done my little soapbox and we're going to just tap everything together all of this brightness that we put in the inner corner we're going to tap that together and then we're going to go ahead and take a peek and see what we have here it's looking really good and then since i did my foundation with the beauty sponge i'm going to take that beauty sponge and i'm going to wring it out just a little bit more with a, that towel that we were using on our under eyes and i'm going to go in with a clean spot and i'm just going to press to really pick up any extra product that doesn't need to be there so the pressing instead of the rubbing or instead of the dot 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 it's going to pick up some see how much I picked up but it's not going to pick up too much and I think that's really important I'm going to use a little bit of setting powder and I'm going to go back with that color pop what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that sponge and I'm going to go in and that looks like a lot um, that powder picked up a lot but if you feel like that's too much flick your brush or flick your sponge just flick off a bunch of it and that's what I'm kind of doing and then I'm left with a lot less and then all I'm going to do is go right in here dot 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 that's it i am not pressing powder in 
a lot, nothing like that. I'm just doing just the bare minimum to set that down because if I do too much, again, too much creates the look of crinkles. It creates that look of really a lot of dryness. So please remember that. You want it to look as natural as possible, so go in with less is more. Play around with this. You can do no powder. You can do no setting spray. You can do both. You can do only one. You can um, not use any corrector if you don't need it. You can use less concealer. You can use a tiny bit more. Just play around with it till you come up with the perfect formula for you. It might take three to five times of you wearing it, seeing what you might feel like was, was not exactly right for you, and then getting to the point to where you love what you're doing. All right, my friends, so here's the final look. Everything's put together. I wanna get you super close. I mean, I'm gonna see how tight we can get this in here. Really close, you can see those under eyes. Now, like I said, you know, when you have your eye makeup on everything doesn't look quite as bad as it would but even here you know I will have those crinkles those crinkles are going to show up but because I used so much less makeup there it's going to look better throughout the day and especially if you're dry it's not going to dry out more and I hope that you really did enjoy seeing this step-by-step -step tutorial and then the finished look and a comparison of side-by-side -side and the thumbnail I hope it was helpful for you if you have any questions at all please leave them for me down below thanks so much for being with me today don't forget to give this video a thumbs up on your way out of here. I do appreciate each of you so very much and I'll catch you all in my next video. Take care of yourselves and love you much. Bye-bye.